In the early 90s, cheaper overseas imports threatened to kill Mickey Mania. In this episode of Coding Secrets, I explain how we disabled the Japanese version of the game if it was played in any other region and left a cheeky message for any would-be hackers. Early games consoles were often launched in Japan many months if not a year before the rest of the world, and some games were never even released outside of Japan. As a result, many games and consoles were imported into other countries before they were ever officially released there. That could undermine sales of games in certain countries as the imported ones were often cheaper, and some games had different publishers in different countries so they'd miss out on sales altogether. Because of this, I decided to add a region check to the Japanese version of Mickey Mania. I'm running the game using an emulator here, so I can easily show you what happens. If I change the console region to Europe and restart the game, I get this message. Developed for use only with NTSC Mega Drive systems, and then the game locks up. So how does this work? Well, here's the code that is called as soon as the game is started. It's called Grey Lockout Code, as the import market was called the Grey Market. It basically works by having a look at this location in memory, A10001. If we check what that contains on the Sega system, we can see it holds something called the version register. As you can see here, this register allows programs to check both the region, overseas means outside Japan, and the video mode, either PAL or NTSC. Looking back at the code, this command is interested in the hexadecimal number C0. If we turn that number into binary, we get the number 11000000. Looking back at the register, we can see that the two bits of the binary number map onto the two settings region and PAL. Back with the code, we effectively check if those settings are both zero, and if not, we know it's running on a different region's machine, and we should lock it. The lock code basically just prints that message on the screen and loops forever. Job done. However, I knew that you could hardware modify the machine to add the ability to swap regions. If you look again at the register information, it says that these two settings are actually affected by JP1 through 4. JP in this case means jumper. If we open up my original Sega Mega Drive and remove the metal shielding, you can see that on the circuit board there are four areas marked JP1, 2, 3 and 4. These are used in manufacture to easily change a generic machine into any region or video mode needed. So Sega could just manufacture one machine and then solder together whichever jumper's needed setting to create a machine for any region. So I just wired up external switches so that I could change the region of my machine to any that I liked at any point. So just for fun, I added a little secret to the region lock code. While the code was infinitely displaying the message, I kept checking the region settings. If they changed to the correct region, I faded up a different message. Oh, this machine has somehow become an NTSC Mega Drive system. So using the emulator, let's see that in action. If I set the region back to Japan, we can see that the message changes, and now if you press a button, the game runs as normal. So why not just keep the machine locked instead of allowing the game to run if I detected that people were messing with the hardware? Well, if I kept it locked, restarting the console would run the game in any case, for as far as the game was concerned, it was then running on a legitimate Japanese console. This was just a very obscure in-joke that I thought very few people would ever see, but with the advent of emulators and simple region changes, it was soon rediscovered. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look into how we try to protect our games whilst giving a cheeky nod to hackers. If you did, please like or even subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Coding Secrets. Bye bye!